everyone's pretty. It's just like nah, that's not true. That is bullshit. I there, think there's so. There's some people that are pretty, some people that are not pretty. Okay, that that, that makes sense. Um, have you ever ha approached a guy? Have you ever been the girl that does the first move to a guy? I don't really have to. Oh Jesus! Like yeah, I, I, I went. I went from from six pack to bapak. I saw. I saw bapak, 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 Chris. Yes. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Bule Go Vlog. And today we have a special guest because usually our guests are ugly Indonesian stand up comedian. And so we needed some, some prettiness, some, something good looking to, to look at. And so in this episode, we have my good friend. She's an influencer, she's a fitness influencer, she's a beauty queen. She used to be. Uh, Miss Earth Indonesia, if I remember correctly. She's a friend. Uh, Ratu Vashti, welcome Hi. to the show. Applause. So I do like the pageant. Oh, that's that, that's the, the pageant. pageant wave that I haven't done in six years. Oh, so you, you're retired. I am retired. Yes, I am retired. But, you know, still. Yeah, no. once a queen, always a queen. Right? <laughs> it's in my name, literally. So. And uh, how are you today? How are you doing? I'm very good. Thank you. And you? I'm. I'm I'm always good. Um, so, Vash, mm -hmm. I, can, I can call, well, I, I am your friend, I can call you. But Vash. you do know that Vash in French means cow, right? Oh, so your name is cow? I, I mean in French, I guess. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, Vash, of course. Yeah. Vacca in Italian. Ah. That's going to be your, your new nickname, <laughs> nickname right now. But... So I, I, I want to ask you a, a little bit. This is how it works. I'm mm -hmm. going to ask you a little bit about yourself. Yes. Uh, if, if there's something you want to talk about, I, uh, we can talk about it. And then we'll, we'll read a few news. The, the first thing that I want to let people know, because uh, many will going to be interested. We did the same thing with Hilam, but on Hilam case, I don't think it's going to be many people interested. But with Vash, Vash, now you're recently single now. Thank yes, you. yes, I am recently single. So yep. you, you are on the market. I am on the market. Yes, I am accepting resumes. Okay. Yeah, I am just like open audition right now at this point. I You're think. auditioning. Yeah, okay. I'm auditioning. And, and, but I guess, because this is the thing, especially in, uh, in a country which is conservative like in Indonesia. Yeah. I guess that there's not as many interactions with girls not is is more guys are not as used to hit on girls are for example in the west mm -hmm. i guess i can see that so and and of course you being uh, a, a beauty queen uh, i think it can be a little bit intimidating for a guy to just start talking to you mm -hmm. so what do you think as a of course a beauty queen a very a, a very nice looking girl what, what do you think is the best way to approach a girl like you? A girl like me? I mean, I can't speak. Yeah, of course. What is the best way to approach you? Of all the girls in mm. Indonesia. But I think if you just come up to a girl, say hi nicely without like looking really weird. Okay. It should be fine. Because right now the biggest red flag is just being a creep, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but, but that's the how you don't look like a creep. Because if you walk to a girl, like this is the, the male perspective. Yeah, okay. Like for a man, and that's why now the new generation is, is much luckier than my generation. Because now you just have Tinder. So you put oh, zero okay. effort. That's you true. just have to scroll and you don't have the fear of rejection. The that's problem true. for a guy is that you see a girl, you, you like her and it's just to get the courage to just go and okay. talk to her. That so, is not easy for a guy. I was actually scrolling through social media and mm -hmm. saw this guy who's like teaching guys how to like approach a, a pickup artist ish, I guess, in a way. But I actually quite agree with this guy's okay. method. So the way he said it is like, just ask the girl something very like general, like, hey, sorry, do you know what time it is? Or like, um, Say you're like studying in the library and like a setup, you mm -hmm. know. And she's like, "Hey, um, are you studying this and this?" Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. 
And then you like pretend to be busy and be like, sorry, is that seat taken? And then if she says yes, then it means, you know, go away. But if she's like, oh, no, it's actually free. Okay. And, okay. So you, know? you, you give an opportunity to, to the yeah, guy but then without, we, without putting too much on stake. So yeah. if she says no, it's not really a rejection. Yes. Mm? Okay. I think that's a good way. And also like in the beginning, it's not like, like I wouldn't feel like you want anything from me. You kind of just want to seek for a general information. Okay. But then that's like how you start a conversation. Okay. We, I, the, there's the producer who has the <laughs> phone on loud. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's fine. She's fired. It's okay. Um, okay. That, that, that makes sense. Um, have you ever ha approached a guy? Have you ever been the girl that does the first move to a guy? I don't really have to. Oh, just kidding, just kidding. I actually have more guy friends than girlfriends. So I guess I wouldn't be able to differentiate the time where I just approach a guy because like, oh, I find this guy interesting. I want to be friends with him. Mm. Or like, you know, I want something from you kind of thing. Fair enough. Fair enough. And and but so like you, you are a, I mean, we are similar in that way. You have a very healthy ego. Um, mm. Why do you think you're single now? I mean, it's not my fault now, is it? It's not your fault. Okay. But uh, did you break up with the guy or were you broken up with? Oh my goodness. This one is a little bit of like, like, a, like, I don't know what situation it was, but you know, what, what, what matters is that it's mm. over and then I can start fresh. Okay. So you're, you're on the market. You're taking CVs, as you said. Yes. I'm taking so, resumes. Yes. So um, Ilam, if you're watching. <laughs> this one this one is uh, you can you. help sort that out i think you'll you have better like green flag um s you can sort out green flags more than me i feel oh yeah absolutely yeah because you know like there's this saying where if you're do you know what buchin is no what is buchin so buchin is an abbreviation for budak cinta budak is slave cinta is love so a slave for love mm -hmm. right and it's like a big thing here in indo where if you kind of like love this person so much you are buchin oh yeah of course you right? whipped yes okay you're, you're like simping over this yes. person and uh when you're like simping over someone you have like this rose tinted glasses so all the red flags is just pink. oh yeah you can you cannot see yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. and therefore since you don't have the rose tinted glasses i think the resume should go to mr chris uh, so, so sort it out so you think your friends are the one who should choose a partner for you yeah like i'll i'll choose the final three oh, and then from that the, final three we, we should have a, a show we will have a, a selection the bachelorette yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, and uh, but let's talk a little bit about uh, your your past because even though you retired, you you were Miss Earth Indonesia, which yep. is a big deal. This was uh, when two thousand and eighteen. Two thousand and eighteen. So you represented your country. Yes. Yes. Um, twice. Twice. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. And and so. The, the world of of beauty queen and the world of pageant is is a little bit of a weird. Uh, it's a little bit of a weird word, you know, because of course you, at least from the outside, you just have, you're just a nice body, but actually there's a lot of work that goes into it once you get elected, right? Mm -hmm. So, so what did you have to do once you were elected as a as a beauty queen? Um, well, Miss Earth specifically, they focus on the environment, right? So each queen would have to have a an advocacy. And my one was I chose sustainable lifestyle mm -hmm. just because I think it's the most attainable. So when I give speeches or seminars, like people, when they're there, they can actually do it like the next day. Instead of if I go for deforestation, for example, they would kind of have to imagine like what's happening instead of like, oh, you know, you can recycle or you can just bring um, a water bottle and stuff like that. Because uh, here in Indonesia, we have science, but we don't really have like environmental studies in a way. Okay. Like people learn um, how there's like greenhouse gases, but then they don't really learn like how to mitigate that problem in their daily lives sort of thing. And, and in Indonesia, is is kind of a big problem. To, right now, yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Like I was it a couple of months ago that in, in Bali, 
there was the the whole trash landfill that started to burn and so there were toxic fumes mm. all over the island for weeks and people could not breathe yeah 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 so so all these things i think one of the core issue is the education system and mm. so like um we can't always count on the government to do everything right we kind of just need to work together and that's kind of like what i wanted to do as miss earth but then if you're asking about like the physical aspect of a, being a beauty queen mm -hmm. like that's one of the hardest thing because you are um people expect you to be perfect when okay. in reality no one is perfect like I have acne prone skin, I would have acne and then people would comment about uh, how I have dark knees or, you know, all these really little things that I wouldn't have noticed if they didn't mention it. And so even in uh, the pageant itself, the international pageant or the local pageant, when you go out of your hotel room, like the quarantine hotel, you have to be perfect. It's mm -hmm. like even if it's like a 7 a.m. breakfast, like you can't rock up in your PJs. And do you think that helps? or with your self-esteem or actually is worse for your self-esteem? Um, I definitely think it's like bad. It's like detrimental yeah. for anyone, to be honest, because you are expected to be perfect, mm. which is something impossible, right? Well, I, I am kind of perfect, to be kind honest. Of. Again, cute highlight, yeah. cute highlight kind of. No, well, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty close highlight. to perfection. Pretty close as, to, as, exactly. As so in a sense, like you kind of just like, oh, I'm like, 98% perfect, but you got to be 100 and it, mm. that 2% drives you crazy because like you kind of need to like work out every day. You have to watch your diet. You have to like put on makeup every day, wear heels, wear all these things to like accentuate. Yeah, but, right? but now that you are not in the beauty, you still pretty much work out every day. That's because I, I love it. I see your Instagram, you're, you're now a fitness influencer. And and, <laughs> and in, what I really like about your Instagram is that, don't don't take it the wrong way, but but many girls that are fitness influencer, they, they sexualize themselves yeah. uh, in a way, you know, mm -hmm. they, they always choose the angle where you can... It's really, just the bar. Exactly. Yeah. As you, you, you do it in a very, like, fitness-oriented, not in uh, look-at-my-body-oriented. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and and how is the life of a fitness influencer? Because basically, you work out twice a day or three times a day. Um, no, no, no. I work out once a day, but I do it, like, five to six times a week. But that, again, it's not because I have to, mm -hmm. but I actually love exercising. I've made it into a habit that for me, if I don't exercise, something's missing from my day. Mm. But I think one of the big things that I want to advocate on my Instagram is that being healthy does not equal to being skinny. Because when I was skinny in the beauty pageant, I was not healthy. Because I was like dieting like crazy. I was like, uh, I wasn't eating enough for the amount of exercise that I'm how many doing. How many kilos did you use to weigh? Um, 40. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and you're very tall also. Kg, yeah, I'm 173 centimeters. So I was like way, 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 way underweight. And I was sickly because of that. But now I'm 58 kg. So I gained like 10 kgs. Mm -hmm. But um, it's a lot of muscle mass and I'm very healthy and I can lift more weights and all these things. And that's why I want to advocate to people that, you know, being healthy does not mean you're skinny. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And the reason why I don't want to sort of like showcase my body in a sense, like, look at me, I'm sexy because I work out because I don't think girls would relate to that, like to that content specifically, because my Instagram is not just to get guides, right? Like I actually want my platform to be inspiring, quote unquote. And be when I was in the beauty pageant, they actually asked me if I wanted to do anything to my face. Like, I don't know, like nose buttocks? job oh, yeah. even, or boob job or anything to my body. And I specifically said, like, if I'm going to win a crown, I want to win it for me because I don't want people to see me and want to be me. But then I'm not real because mm. they would think like, oh, to be a beauty can you need to look like that. And it's like a something that you create. And also now that there's a lot of influencers who just use Photoshop in their picture. And yes. So it doesn't make sense. But so what what would be your your advice? Like if you want to have a healthier lifestyle. Mm. Uh, so what are the what do you have to start with? Have you read the book uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear? I, I, I did, but I guess it's many didn't. It's my favorite book 
for like self-help, I guess, because like he said something about to create a healthy habit, you need to start small. So start with something that is very attainable, like you won't be too lazy to do it. So if it's just like 10 push-ups every day, mm. but you do it consistently for like two, three weeks, it becomes a habit. Yeah, because that's always the problem. You know, you start to diet and the first week you go super hard, you only eat yeah, salad yeah, 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 and yeah, then yeah, you yeah, com yeah. immediately lose your motivation exactly. about it. Exactly. And if you go to the gym, like say you sign up for a gym that's like 20 kilometers away from your house. Mm. So you kind of like, oh, my goodness, I don't want to wake up in the morning and go to the gym. And so you don't do it. But then if you just have to roll out of bed, do 10 push ups for like two weeks, you would do it and then it's and build it up. So basically it's to make things easier for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks different for everyone because to me doing 10 push ups every day is a chore. Mm, fair enough. Yeah. What is your favorite exercise? Do you do cardio? Do you do CrossFit? I hate, 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 hate cardio. Okay. I hate running, but I'm starting to do it because I know it's good for me. Like I have to have this mindset that not everything good is something that I would like. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, yes. like broccoli. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I like CrossFit. I like Olympic weightlifting and I recently got my certification in Pilates. So I teach oh. Pilates too now. What is Pilates? I've, um, I've seen videos. I, I don't really understand what it is. Okay, we should do Pilates okay. uh, next time. But it's basically like a whole body exercise but it uses the muscles that you wouldn't necessarily use in a traditional gym setting because mm. it's like micro muscles like the mini muscles like your inner thigh and like all your core that's why if you see like all the pilates girlies they have like snatched abs okay. that's all they use for everything okay so it's good for abs mm -hmm. okay so yeah i definitely should do pilates i have a yeah I, so I then your face isn't like all bloated like yeah that I, one I, I went i went from <laughs> From six pack to bapak. I saw, I saw bapak, 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 Chris. Yes, ah, but but also Indonesia is weird because Indonesia is is as that all the good food in Indonesia is fattening food in Indonesia, mm -hmm. and Indonesia is, is such a good food culture, which yes. is, is is very difficult to say no. Yes, to Indo because because also you guys are very insisting in mm -hmm. giving a lot of food, so it's it's difficult to keep to keep on, on, on a diet, I guess. So yeah. how, how much, how many times do you eat a day and, and how, do you, are you, how do you manage your diet? I don't, that's the thing, I don't diet. Like I eat all the food I want, but I learned that I will, I learn to listen to myself when I know I'm full, I don't eat more than that. Mm. That's it, I eat anything I want, because I love eating. Like I love my soto betawi, I love my rendang Indonesian version. And you know, everything I love. I love eating everything. But, oh, nasi padang, have you tried? Mm. Yeah, dude. Of course. The best thing. And yeah, I eat that just like a normal person would. But if I'm full, I'm full. Mm. I think that's like, that's like the thing, right? You're full, but then, oh, there's still like this cake right here. Yeah. And, like, you know. But then I learned like, okay, there's this cake right there, but there's also tomorrow. I can eat that tomorrow when I'm hungry. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Don't torture yourself. Why would you like you you live to eat? And Especially in Indonesia. And what's your favorite food? <gasps> maybe maybe soto betawi. Soto betawi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think I've ever tried soto. <gasps> what? And you've been in Jakarta for how long? No, Jakarta only one month. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Dinner on me. Okay. Soto betawi. As long as it's on you, I I'm okay. And 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 this is the thing. There's so many bulles that live in Bali mm -hmm. that they never left Bali. Yeah. Or or not even that. That there's there's bule areas of Bali. There's uh, villages like Changu, like Kuta, like yeah. Ubud, and they don't even go in other parts of Bali. Yeah. Yeah. Th this is actually the the running joke that, and it's true. Many many visitors think that Bali is not part of Indonesia, but is his own country. Yeah. Actually, I've experienced that firsthand. Like when I go to pageants, like with like the other contestants, or even when I was studying in Australia, like they would ask like where Indonesia is. And I have to say, like, oh, do you know Bali? And then they're like, oh yeah, Bali. Oh, wow. And, and also th that's kind of uh, the, the, many people think that beauty pageants are, are not that super smart. Yeah, I, I heard of that a lot. 
but um you know you talk to us <laughs> and then you can judge by yourself i think but but also i remember there were a few viral video where they were asking question to beauty pageant and mm -hmm. they had no idea Mm -hmm. Like, uh, for example, they I remember there was this viral video in uh, a few years ago that were asking this American, of course, she's American beauty pageant <laughs> about about the, the state of the world. And she still thought that there was like slavery in Africa and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, that's why it's very important to read you guys read the news. But yeah, I actually teach uh, like my juniors on how to answer questions like that. In so you teach also new yeah new beauty just groups. like the the newer generation of the okay. beauty pageant queens just so that they know how to answer when they're in a difficult situation because you're on stage you're kind of nervous the lights on you like it happens you forget what to say mm. but then i just teach them how to bluff basically fair enough this is also one thing that i noticed that i i'm not sure is is positive is weird for me as a bully okay I, I, I see that in many ways, for example, TV and movies, the beauty standard for Indonesian is they want an Indonesian person that looks European. Yes. Do you know I was bullied for the longest time because I have tan skin? Really? So boys call me ugly for the longest time because I have dark skin. They would mock me and be like, oh, look at that dark person who wants to be um, her boyfriend for the longest time, like until middle school. I remember like in elementary, I would go to the library and just like be by myself and read books. But haha, -ha, now I'm smart. Because <laughs> yeah. that's also weird because in Europe it's the opposite. Yes. Yeah, like we want to be as dark skin as possible. Yeah. Like, so I experienced the complete opposite when I went to uni in Australia. Okay, so you studied in, uh, in Australia. Where in yeah. Australia? Uh, Brisbane. Nice. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So it was like a, the complete opposite. People are just like, oh, you don't turn into a lobster when you go under the sun. I'm like, yeah, I can't say the same to you, but, you know, <laughs> to each their own. <laughs> I, I, I remember my, my wife is, is black. She's also used to do a lot of pageant. And, and she told me this is the first time that I heard about it, that there was a lot of actually colorism mm. within the black community that even though they were both black, people would say, I, I'm not going to talk to you because you're much darker skin than I am. Really? Yeah. Even in... Uh, and, and she met the first white person when she was like seven years old. Like she was in a very black area. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's the same here too. I mean, at least before, like when I was growing up, maybe when I was 17, like I couldn't really find the shade of foundation for me from mm. local brands. Like I have to actually go to like international brands and find ones for Latinas. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and there's also a lot of the whitening products, mm -hmm. which for us European is the weirdest thing. It's yeah, I ever. never wanted to use them. And even if brands sort of like come to me and be like, hey, use this product. I'm like, I'm really sorry. I don't want to advocate for like someone changing themselves for to fit into a beauty standard that I think should not be there in the first place. Because I really I really want people to just stop trying to pressure themselves to be pretty for society mm. because i feel like everyone's pretty it's just like nah, that's not true that is bullshit i there, think there's so. some people that are pretty some people that are not pretty that that's because because that's also the thing like if like not everybody can be a 10 because then there's no skill yeah fair i i i see where you're going but you if know, everything if everyone is special it means that nobody's special that's true very true but also you don't need to be a 10 to be pretty yeah, but i i think that maybe it should be re rephrased it's, it's not about being pretty it's about actually which is actually more important being comfortable in your body because yes. i know a lot of people that are not like by society good looking but they're very comfortable and I see the opposite people that are considered beautiful, yeah. but they're so insecure with themselves. Yes. Yeah. Because I think personally, if you're if society deemed you as pretty, you kind of feel like that's your whole value. And so you're pressured to keep it like that for the longest time. Like I honestly, I feel that sometimes like when you take away the prettiness from Vashti, then do you see who Vashti really is? Mm. Because sometimes people talk about beauty privilege, right? And I agree, there it's, is. It's, absolutely it's, it's true. there. Beauty privilege is there. But in a sense, like 
there's also a bad thing about it. When you're really pretty, sometimes people just want to talk to you because you're pretty and not really actually get to know who you are. They don't care about your personality. I get that a lot. People yeah, just I know, see me I as a pretty you, face. I know you can understand me. <laughs> so you... Because uh, also this is the thing, before we go to the next news, like I think now, especially in the West, is is going completely overboard. Now, uh, especially for women, I don't know why for men it doesn't work the same, but for women now, everyone is just saying how healthy it is to be obese. Oh, which yeah. which doesn't really like because that's the fact you know like thank god we all like different things so if, if you like bigger women or bigger men it's fine mm -hmm. but but now they they go completely against science because everyone has to be included everyone has to be beautiful which is i yeah. think is counterproductive because then it's not healthy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i agree with you i think uh like the body positive body positivity movement has gone overboard in that mm. in a sense because i like i said healthy doesn't mean skinny but that also doesn't mean accepting yeah ob obesity as well uh, do we have any miss producer now she's not even listening do we have <laughs> any question Okay, so I, I don't know. They, they want us to, to read some, some news. I don't know if they're going to show us also the video. They are, are changing the capital, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, he's going to be in uh, IKN uh, News Antar. But is it true that they're changing the capital because uh, uh, Jakarta is, uh, is going underwater? This is what I heard. Oh, really? Uh, what I heard okay. is that we're changing the capital because Jakarta is already too crowded. So we need like, you know, like an Australia situation where Sydney mm. is like the business district, and then Canberra. Well, is that, that the makes capital. sense because yeah. Jakarta between the machete and the air pollution. Yeah, is, I'm, is I'm so excited for the Gaian, to be honest. So like, you know, all the government officials would be right there. And then we'll be right here. We'll be like a New York and Washington DC situation, hopefully. Okay, so let's watch the video, I guess. But so. That is going to be the political capital. Yes. Right? And and the financial capital will still be Jakarta. The biz yeah, the business one. When when is it supposed to be ready? I just read today that like the hotel and the the the, the presidential house would be ready uh 17th of August this year actually. Oh wow. Okay. So if they say 17th of August it's going to be 2025 20, probably. I mean, they said this year because the new president's here like this year. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. It looks pretty. Yeah. Have, have you ever been there in, no, no. in that area of uh, Indonesia? Not even. I've never been to Kalimantan, actually. Would love to go. Where have you been, like in Indonesia? In Indonesia, well, I, I haven't traveled that much. Um, I, I mostly just travel to, to perform. Yeah. So, well, I, I lived five years in Bali. Uh, I've been to Lombok. Mm -hmm. I've been to Jakarta, obviously. I've been to Surabaya. I've been to Bandung. Jakarta? No, Jakarta never, not yet. Really? Yeah, I was supposed to, but I had a problem with my show. And I've been to Bogor, of all places. Okay. So, this is an article that we found uh, since you, you always promote uh, uh, health lifestyle and, and this is one of the problems I have the problem I have is that if you read the news and if you read the information you find completely contradicting information all the time yeah so you don't know what to listen to because yeah. there's someone that says no you have to be vegan no you have to be carnivore no you have to be uh, keto yeah and it's the same thing for exercises mm -hmm. and and most of it is just trying to sell you their courses and trying to sell you their stuff. So, for example, this article says that there is health benefit of just putting your feet to the wall. And, and uh, from CNN Indonesia, actually. And, and they talk about, you know, in the, in, the, in the yoga, they used to have this and the moving your body. And I think moving your body is important, but I think most of it is just bullshit. Okay, so these are eight benefits to, like, putting your feet to the wall, like... To me, that's so dumb. Like, why would you do that? Okay, I don't know from like three to eight, but one to two, I can confirm. 
Okay. When I was in the so what to do is relieve pain and muscle fatigue reduces and reduce inflammation, inflammation in the feet and ankles. Okay. Uh, I used to do this when I was in the pageant because I have to wear heels all the time, like twelve centimeter heels. Okay. So I'm kind of like tiptoeing my whole like entire day, right? So I don't know how like there's no pictures in this article, but I th if if I'm understanding this correctly, it's kind of just alleviating your feet, like on the wall so then the blood just kind of runs down because it's always it's like pressured on like your feet all the do you do it i used to okay. I, I don't wear heels anymore so i don't really do it anymore okay but then was it wasn't that it was a benefit of doing it it was that you were doing something that was bad for your feet yeah and you were recovering uh, yeah. yes you know so way. you just kind of alleviate it and you know it's easier if you just put your feet up on the wall because you know you're just like sitting down, you know gravity and stuff. Right, just put it there. So I cannot confirm three to eight, but I can confirm one to two. Okay, so before we close, uh, just what is the base like? E if you want to be healthier, what are the base? What are the first steps that you should take? Because and and steps that don't require necessarily to spend money because that's also what many people say that being fit and being pretty and being healthy is expensive yeah and it's not necessarily true i mean sometimes it is <laughs> yeah if i have to say one thing um that you guys should do if you want to be healthy to like everyone in this world is that you have to want to be healthy because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if I tell you to be healthy or you tell them to be healthy, but you don't want it. You're never really going to do anything about it because humans are inherently selfish. So you have to think like, what's in it for me? Why do I want this? And when you have that answer, you will find a way. To so so you have to decide. There's a quote that is when the pain of changing is less than the pain of remaining the yes, same, yes, yes, yes. that's when you change. Yeah, exactly. And again, like we mentioned about James Clear, just start with something small, 10 push-ups. For you, maybe it's small. For me, it's like a massive chore. But, you know, start with that, do it consistently, and voila, you'll be healthy in, I won't say no time, in some time. Yeah, and 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 it's and and this is also the thing, just like with the diet, yep. is, is going to be a, a shift of lifestyle. You know? Yeah. Because otherwise, then you will go back to the bad habits that yes. you used to have. And don't expect drastic changes. Like, appreciate the little changes. Okay. Yeah. If you expect drastic changes, you'll be demotivated in no time. That, that, is, that is very true. Motivation. If you only focus on the motivation, uh, motivation after a while, it just goes away yeah. and then you will have none of it. Uh, with that said, thank you very much. Uh, thank you were you. lovely as always uh what's your instagram handle it's ratu vashti ratu vashti please follow her uh she gives a lot of uh great content fitness content and of course like comment subscribe to bullet Golf blog and uh, write us in the comment uh if you like fash and uh who do you want us to have next in our show thank you very much and have a great day